In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Hunter K asks us, why do people breathe into a paper bag in movies when they get really freaked out? Well, it's all about pH balance. No, not the skin pH that keeps some deodorant strong enough for a man, but pH balanced for a woman, rather the pH within the body. The human body has two main mechanisms for controlling pH. One involves the kidneys, the other involves breathing. When our body is working or not, it requires a specific amount of oxygen to maintain that level of work. When the body receives more oxygen than it needs, the result can be what's known as respiratory alkalosis, high pH. One of the most common causes is hyperventilating. The point of breathing into a bag is to rebreathe your exhaled carbon dioxide, CO2, in the hopes of bringing your body back to a normal pH level. The potential of hydrogen, or power of hydrogen, depending on what historian you read, pH is a measurement of the amount of hydrogen ions within a substance, basically measuring how acidic or basic something is. The scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral. Anything lower than 7 is more acidic, anything higher is more basic. Unlike some scales that are linear, this one is logarithmic. This means that a pH of 3 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 4, and a pH of 2 is 100 times more acidic than a 4. Like almost everything within the human body, your pH needs to be in a very narrow range to maintain the many chemically mediated processes within it, like cellular metabolism, cardiac, and other organ functions. The normal range for pH in humans is 7.35 to 7.45, with a pH of 7 7.4 considered average. The pH is maintained in this slightly basic state by what is known as the acid-base balance, or acid-base homeostasis. The body has many natural ways to keep this level appropriate, known as buffering systems, with the two main such mechanisms involving your kidneys and breathing rate. In an effort not to give a lecture on kidney function, we will just say the kidneys can either absorb or release more bicarbonate, a base, and or secrete more hydrogen ions depending on its needs at the time. This process can take quite a while to change the overall pH of the body, so is more effective at controlling chronic pH levels. If the body needs to adjust pH more quickly, it can do so through your breathing rate. If your body becomes too acidic, it will cause you to breathe faster. This releases more CO2 on exhalation and raises the overall pH to become more basic. If you breathe slower or rebreathe excessive CO2, your pH will drop and become more acidic. Now that you know what happens when you breathe faster, let's talk about the effects that this will have on your body if you do this when it doesn't need you to. Let's say you're sitting on the couch watching television when Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith comes on. All the men and women in the room begin to breathe heavier than their bodies need. The resulting hyperventilation syndrome will cause what is known as respiratory alkalosis or hypercapnia. This more basic state begins to affect electrolyte levels. Just like pH levels, electrolyte levels must be maintained in a narrow range for all your body's systems to function appropriately. Alkalosis will result in potassium and phosphate levels that are lower than they should be. Calcium will then start to bind to a class of proteins, albumin, that creates a low calcium level. All of this will result in some very unwanted side effects. Some neurological effects include numbness and tingling in your fingers, toes, lips, and other extremities. Muscle tetany. This leaves you with an uncontrolled cramp known as a carpopedal spasm. Decreased pressure within your head due to a constriction of your blood vessels and an inhibition of your breathing, which isn't so bad in this case as you are breathing too fast anyway. Cardiac effects can include abnormal heart rhythms and a decrease in the force of your heartbeat, causing low blood pressure. Some other symptoms include chest pain, confusion, dizziness, dry mouth, and weakness. One potentially problematic symptom is the feeling of being short of breath. This can cause the person to breathe even faster and thus make the problem worse. Hyperventilation syndrome can be caused by a few different different things. There are some different disease processes that can cause it, like high blood sugars, hyperglycemia, bleeding excessively, becoming overly excited, chronic respiratory issues, and cardiac problems. The most common cause, however, is anxiety, also known as panic disorder. It accounts for approximately 25% of all cases of hyperventilation. The idea behind breathing into a paper bag is that you will begin to breathe in more CO2 than if you were inhaling normal air. This will then help bring your body's pH back to a normal range. Hopefully, this will also help with the feeling of being short of breath, and the person will then begin to breathe normally again. 
Breathing into a paper bag is not, however, the most recommended method to control your hyperventilation. Should you think you're having an anxiety attack and are actually having a diabetic or cardiac problem or are having an asthma attack, breathing more CO2 will make the problem worse and hasten death. Instead, doctors will generally advise you on breathing techniques that help. Should those be ineffective, there are a few different classes of drugs they can prescribe. While breathing into a bag is effective, in the end, should you feel like you're hyperventilating, seek advice from a medical professional before you reach for your kid's lunch sack. Or not. What's life without a little risk? And hey, the paramedic author of this piece would be out of a job if you all stopped having medical emergencies. And now for a bonus fact. Speaking of CO2, seemingly all female mosquitoes, the mosquitoes that suck your blood in order to help make baby mosquitoes, identify you as a potential target for a blood meal via the carbon dioxide that your body puts off, which they detect via their maxillary palp organ. In fact, mosquitoes can detect you this way from up to about 100 to 150 feet away. This is one of the many reasons mosquitoes tend to target people who are in the middle of exercising more. When you're working out and breathing hard, you're giving off more carbon dioxide than you otherwise would in your resting state. This also contributes to overweight or otherwise larger individuals being more targeted by mosquitoes than their slimmer or shorter brethren. The more body mass, the more oxygen the body needs to maintain it, and the more carbon dioxide the individual will give off. Essentially, the higher your metabolic rate, the more carbon dioxide you give off, and the more you'll be, at least initially, attractive to female mosquitoes looking for some blood so that they can make baby mosquitoes. This is also one of the reasons why children are usually less likely to be bitten by mosquitoes than adults and men are more likely to be bitten than women. Another contributing factor to people exercising being more likely to be bitten is body heat. The higher your body heat, the more likely a mosquito is to notice you. This is also generally hypothesized to be a potential reason that people who are drinking alcohol are more likely to be bitten. However, it should be noted that it's a myth that drinking alcohol raises your body temperature. In fact, the opposite happens. The age-old remedy for staving off extreme cold via drinking alcohol actually makes it more likely that you'll get hypothermia as alcohol cools your body. Drinking alcohol does make you feel warmer, though, because it dilates your blood vessels, particularly the capillaries under the surface of your skin. Thus, the volume of blood brought to the skin's surface increases, making your skin a lot warmer and sometimes more sweaty. These two factors may result in you being more attractive to mosquitoes, at least as far as this commonly touted hypothesis goes. Pregnant women are also more attractive to mosquitoes, statistically almost twice as likely to be bitten than the rest of the general populace. The culprits in this case are generally thought to mirror those of exercises, carbon dioxide and heat. Pregnant women exhale on average about 21% more carbon dioxide than when they are not pregnant. Their body temperature is also typically slightly higher than non-pregnant individuals, particularly around the belly. Another factor that potentially attracts mosquitoes from afar is clothing color and movement. While it's not completely understood why mosquitoes are more attracted to people wearing darker colored clothing, the general hypothesis put forward is that it may have something to do with making you stand out more on the horizon. Mosquitoes tend to fly low to the ground to stay out of the wind as much as possible, and it may also have something to do with heat, with dark clothing absorbing more sunlight. Moving around is presumed to make you more attractive to mosquitoes via motion, allowing the mosquito to better distinguish your body from the surrounding environment. So that's the initial attraction. Much like that girl at the bar last night, just because a female mosquito is attracted to you from afar, once they get close up, and even after they land, they may actually decide not to bite. After all, an idling car gives off plenty of carbon dioxide and heat, which will initially attract a mosquito, but once up close, the lack of other markers will let it know it's not potentially a blood source. The factors involved in whether a mosquito will decide to land and then whether they decide to bite essentially comes down to your general scent and then taste, both in terms of certain chemicals attracting the mosquito even more and others potentially repelling them. How sweaty you are at a given moment and what exactly is in your sweat will greatly influence these attractive and repellent factors, with such markers as lactic acid, uric acid, and ammonia being among the compounds in your sweat and other skin excretions that attract mosquitoes. On the other hand, those who naturally excrete the compound 6-methyl-5-heptin-2-1 have been found to be significantly less likely to be bitten, owing to this compound acting as something of a mosquito repellent. One's blood type also seems to be one of the markers used by mosquitoes to determine whether or not you're a good candidate for a blood meal. How? Well, approximately 85% of people emit certain blood type markers, something at least certain types of mosquitoes seem to be able to detect. While significantly more research needs to be 
done to determine whether blood type really makes much of a difference in likelihood of being bitten by a mosquito, in one study looking at Asian tiger mosquitoes, it was found that people with type O blood were nearly twice as likely to be bitten as people with type A blood. It also appears that the blends of microbes living on your body also affect how attractive you are to at least certain types of mosquitoes, although research into this is pretty scant at this stage. That said, in one 2011 study, Composition of Human Skin Microbiota Affects Attractiveness to Malaria Mosquitoes, they found that more diverse colonies of microbes on your skin actually seem to repel mosquitoes, whereas a high density of just a small number of certain microbes, such as Staphylococcus SPP, seems to attract them. And I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week and thank you for watching